new folks Papa Joe here. Early in the morning. It's five o'clock. A few minutes after. You know, let me start by telling you that if smoke can offend you, this might not be your video. If me blowing my nose offend you, this might not be a video for you. It's springtime, pollen's heavy, and my sinuses are going nuts. And no, I don't take a bunch of that allergy, no runny nose medication stuff. I don't do it. I let it go its course. I have taken it. But I try not to take much medication. That's just my thing. If you want to be a trustee of modern chemistry, have at it. I was back in the 70s but it didn't come over the counter. Some of y'all got that, some didn't. But, uh, I thought I would have a little chat with some of you folks wanting to come into trucking or just getting into trucking. Here we go. Uh, And this nose thing is a every morning deal. My sinus is draining. It just the uh, allergy, the uh, uh, pollen just really helps. You know, there's a few things with the trucking industry. How should I say it? Has been a constant. One of them is real obvious if you read the comments on my videos. It doesn't matter what you say and how right it is. You're going to find other people that's going to argue with you. It's a fact. This industry is so large and there are so many avenues that you can go down you wouldn't believe it. If you uh, come out here with an agenda, I didn't. Most of them in my group didn't. I mean, those that's been out here since dinosaurs were young. Uh, you could really do something with this industry. That's true. There are those out there that when someone like myself get online and we're telling you the honest truth about the industry, it doesn't meet their definition of the industry. So they want to get all kinds of stupid and call you a hater and all this other shit. I just made a video about old boy saying how negative I was. I don't consider it being negative. I consider it being honest. I've said for years and continue to say it that if you get on the radio or you walk into a group of truck drivers and ask what time it is and they tell you 12 noon, I would go outside and look and see if the sun was up. And you're going to wind up, if you've got 12 people in there, you're going to get 14 or 15 different answers. That's just how it is. Something that you learn to deal with out here. Uh, is this industry perfect? No. But what industry is? And then you have to take into consideration that it's not just the industry, it's the way of the world today. Someone made a comment on one of my videos and uh, where I was talking about basically you're nothing but a piece of equipment. 
they allowed how that's pretty much everywhere anymore, and it is. I've stated that myself. When my uncles were in their prime, they were working at Ford and at a glass plant. Uh, one worked at a cheesecake place. They were allowed to build up a retirement, and after 20 years, they got to retire. And I've got some that worked and built up a couple of different retirements. So when they went into retirement, they was doing pretty damn good. And the trucking industry You have to ask the right questions and make sure that they have any kind of retirement for you. And uh, some of them will contribute, but nothing like they did back in the day. Back in the day, all of the industries took care of their employees. That was one of their drawing cards. And it was expected. Nowadays, they don't give a damn. A couple reasons. One is because they're not having their feet held to the fire. That was right after, I don't know what movement they called it, but that was right after the unions and all that came in and and start holding companies accountable and and uh, the union was a damn good thing when it started because the American workers were being abused so to speak and uh, that kind of straightened them out for quite a while and the places were taken care of well that's kind of fell by the wayside nowadays can you find a company that's going to take care of you? Yes, you can. You know, people like to take one. Someone makes a comment like that, that they want to paint the whole world with this big old wide brush, and he must be talking about everyone. And look here, I've got this perfect job. It's a world, people. You've got people on different levels. You've got companies on different levels. That's the way it works. It doesn't matter what you say, you're going to find somebody that wants to argue with you. Uh, for those of you that's getting into the trucking industry, <coughs> it is nothing new to have these people that start telling you about how great their life is, how great their job is. As long as I've been in the industry, which is a long time, you've always had those on the CB at the liar's table, which we don't even have a liar's table anymore. That if you was talking or somebody was bitching about their company or someone was bitching about the rates that they was getting paid, there was somebody else. If the national average was a dollar and a nickel, they was making four dollars a mile. Hell yeah. Now well, that'd been an owner operator. But you'd have some guy claim to be a company driver, and if the national average was forty cents a mile, he was making sixty. You had those in the industry forever. It's ridiculous, but you, you know, it's just like the guy that wants to call the uh, uh, federal marshal. I called the federal marshal, and they was there in a heartbeat. Gotcha. I had one guy trying to tell me that he had worked some kind of special forces. And they came out to his place and giving him a hard way and he made one phone call and 
Less than five minutes, there was helicopters surrounding them. You've been reading too many books. You're going to have them. Just like you're going to have grumpy old farts like myself, you're going to have those that are going to just point blank lie to you. When you have people like me being honest, you're going to have those that are going to just come up with some of the damnedest stories you ever heard. That's mankind. And it don't matter uh, where you're at in life, I know you've come across them. Ain't we all? I warned you about the runny nose. It quit in about three hours. You know, it hasn't been a all bad living for me out here. It's provided for my family for damn near 30 years. Got my kids grown up. I missed a lot of them growing up. That's true. And it don't matter how much I tell you about what kind of a lifestyle it is and what it's going to do to you and your family. You won't believe it until you get out here. Period. You can't get a grip on it until you're out here. We got one individual. I talked to him and his wife and explained to him how it was. Told him it was a life. Uh, lifestyle told him how much he'd be gone and how it would affect the home front well, I think the wife is doing okay with it but he's getting the blues out here oh I miss my wife and my children and yeah you will And the hell of it is, if you dwell on it, it only makes it worse. I know. Been there. Done it. That's just how it works. You're going to be stuck out here in a truck. You're lucky. You got telephones. This media nonsense. You can do video calls and Hell, back in the day, we had to stand in line and wait on a pay phone, or we had to go into a phone booth at one of the truck stops. Believe it or not, all the truck stops used to have a bunch of phones in them. Nowadays, you're lucky if you even see the old phone booth. Some of the old Flying J's still got them. You go by, and there's a whole row of doors. Those are the old phone booths. Now they just stick junk in there and use them for storage. Old Mount Eagle truck stop. It ain't there no more. It's a uh, something else now. I forget what it is. It ain't a pilot. It's something else. You used to go in there and they had a, I don't know, a 10 by 6 room. Two walls was covered with bones. You could smoke indoors back then. That was nothing but one smoke-filled room. If you weren't a smoker when you went in, you smelled like one when you came out. I spent some time with that rascal. Tell you, got where you didn't even take your cigarette. Just go in there and breathe. I'm joking on that part. You know, that's just one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is you're going to be treated like a piece of equipment. You're going to be treated like a third-class citizen. Your company, more than likely, 
And no, this isn't all of them. So don't get on here telling me how your company treats you like you're the Prince of Shia. The companies are going to, they might not tell you, but they will treat you like you're supposed to be a piece of equipment and when your 10 hour break is up, you need to get rolling. You don't need a real weekend off. You only need 34 hours because that's what it takes to reset your clock. One of my biggest pet peeves, and it hasn't been for a long time, is that they get a full lunch break, an hour at most places. You're lucky to grab something to go. They have you scheduled so damn tight that you're lucky to have time to stop, use the bathroom, and grab something to eat along the way throughout the day. They go home every day for 16 hours. You're only supposed to take a 10 hour break because your 10 hours is all the law requires. You need to get to rolling. That truck needs to be rolling. You need to make company some money. So they get a lunch break. They get to go home every day. And you get a 34 hour break. Now the national or norm or the industry norm is you stay out seven days and you're entitled to one day off. Really? They just got from four o'clock Friday to eight o'clock Monday off. Well, you get one day. And some of the companies don't want you to take more than three or four days at a time. Some of them will let you build them up. So if you stay out for seven weeks, you get a whole week off. Now, if you do the math, if they've got seven weeks in, they've had 14 days off. Now, who in the hell came up with that math? And you're not supposed to mention about it. You're supposed to be grateful to them. There are those that have been out here for just a few years, five, seven years, ten years. They're still in their honeymoon phase of the industry. They're still loving it. They got the romance of the road. And they still have blinders on. They can't see the truth of what's going on around them. Because they love their job. That's fine. Love your job. Just because you're still loving it doesn't make the old drivers that don't have blinders on. That don't make us wrong. It don't make us haters or angry or nothing else. It just means we can see the truth. So as you're getting your information from whoever, you need to determine what phase they're in. Are they still on their honeymoon? Or are they burnt out? It makes a difference on the information that they're giving you. This media stuff. I have so many people that come to my channel. That tell me I'm a breath of fresh air because I'm honest and I tell the truth. And they've been over on other channels where it's nothing but a bunch of hogwash and lies. And the language is just ridiculous. They can't speak a sentence without using at least a half a dozen cuss words. Really. 
I used to be that guy, not on media. I quit the worst of my cousin long before this stuff. And then they get on here putting on a show. I've seen a few of those. They can't come on here and just be them. They have to create a personality to come online with. What's wrong with being yourself? I've been being me for damn near 60 years now. Here in a few months, it'll be 60 years, to tell you the truth. Damn it. Rearranging some stuff. Which that's something else you're going to find out. Here it is, 5.30 in the morning. Protein drink. I got morning meds that require protein. Now I've been up. Let me take my meds. I've been up since before 5 o'clock. That's because yesterday got to be a long day. I damn near burned out my 14 and when I stopped I had 6 minutes left on my 11. I wound up going to bed early for me. So I got up early. I can only sleep so many hours at a time and I naturally wake up. Now this morning, I was gathering up some of my stuff out of here and putting it in a box to go to the house. Actually, you can barely see the brown box right there in the shadows. Did the box I'd picked up a couple weeks ago because I knew this was coming. This is the first company I have ever drove for in all these years <coughs> that uh, <coughs> they're having me leave my truck at the yard. That ain't quite true. It's second company. A champion had me leave it at their yard in Atlanta. Uh, I would, had requested a four day weekend, which I'm normally off weekends anyway. I live 477 miles from where I parked the truck by my house to our yard. So for a four day weekend, they wanted me to park my truck at the yard and drive home, which I don't have a car at the yard. So that means I would have had to either rode a bus or rented a car. So I canceled that four day weekend. <laughs> I was supposed to get home on Wednesday and have Thursday, Friday off. The Monday before, that is when they broke it to me that I need to leave the truck in the yard. That was a blow to me and Grandma. So I canceled those two vacation days and I put them on the front end of these this vacation I'm fixing to take here in a few weeks. 
I can understand on my two weeks that they want the truck at the yard. That four day weekend, that blew me away. It actually pissed me off, to tell you the truth. So, uh, they're talking about they might have put someone in my truck while I'm gone. Really? My thoughts on it, and the way the industry has worked for me for these past 30 years, is that if the driver has drove enough throughout the year that he warrants vacation time, the truck gets a break too. Evidently, they don't feel that way over here anymore. So now they want you to leave the truck in the yard in case they need it. Which means that if all my stuff's in here, they're going to put somebody else in here with my stuff. Now, grant you it's your truck. But my stuff won't be in here. So I've been cleaning my stuff out and taking it to the house for the last couple of weekends. When I get home, Grandma comes to pick me up. I'm taking out extra stuff that I don't need. Getting down to bare bones. Because when my vacation time comes up, I have to get over to rent a car and then finish emptying my stuff out into my truck or into my rental car so that I ain't leaving nothing in here. Nothing. The smell of cigarettes is what will be left in here. Some of the stuff they do nowadays just blows me away. Watching all the trucks easing out, and I ain't going to be too far behind them. He might hit a truck over there. But he made it out. Yeah, the industry's a one big mass of all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of jobs, and you just have to figure out what part of it is right for you. Now, not only were I talking about the drivers being so far-fetched, as you're talking to companies, you're going to find out they ain't too damned honest themselves. One of my favorite sayings out of here is they all like to tell you how they're family-oriented. This company will tell you that. But they're family oriented towards their family, not yours. People are starting to have issues with getting their time off on the, as they're requesting over here. Because you don't have a life outside of this truck, according to the way they think. And that's pretty much how it's starting to be in the whole industry. Yes, you'll find the other kind. People don't understand that that average is nothing but a pendulum swinging back and forth. And to hit the national average in the middle, you got to have bad, good. 
and it all averages out in the middle. So you have to learn how to tell the good from the bad. And being that you're not experienced in the industry, that's going to be a hell of a chore for you to do. Just how it is. And I'm, am I angry? No. I'm just honest. And that's for people that need sugar coating. They don't like my channel. No sugar added. I'm going to tell you the truth as I see it. No, just like the national average of the pay. You've got some of the mega companies that's just ripping off the new people coming out. Going to use them up, make money off of them. Burn them out. Turn a lot of them against the trucking industry because they think that's the norm. And then you've got those that really take care of their drivers. Between the two, you come up with a national average. Did a little peek inside the trucking industry. Ain't nothing but a job, folks. When you first come out, it's so cool. It really is. Well, back in my day. Then people ask, would you do it all over? Well, going into it like I did, yes. Going into it today, probably not. Not if I knew now what I knew then. Probably not. And I say probably because there are some damn good jobs out here. If you only knew what I knew, and you could pick that job, then yeah, I probably would. But you don't know what I know. So it's going to be damn hard on you to pick that job. Mr. Moth, your life is short. And am I going to tell people not to get into the industry? No, I'm not. Because we all have our own unique situation in life. And this could be a hell of a lot better for you and your family than what you're doing. It could be hard on you, but it could be better than what you're doing. Because like I said, everyone is taking advantage of the workers anymore. Period. He saved his life. He flew out the other window. You know, so if you're at some job where you're barely making minimum wage, you can make better than that out here. Your first year or two is going to be rough, people. Period. And yeah, there will be those get on here telling you how I'm so wrong and that you can make a million dollars. That wasn't a hand that was... Saying that if you come out and save $50,000 a year and, and boy, you're set in five years. I don't know of a company driver out here that can do anything and save $50,000 a year. Including, I know a couple people that uh, live out here. They don't have a home. No bills to, for the house. All they got is their cell phone bill and maybe a car note and insurance. They can't save $50,000 a year out here. I don't know what the national average is for pay out here, but I'll bet you it's damn close to $50,000 a year. And yeah, you're going to have those get on here and tell you how they're making $80,000, $100,000, and 
They've only been driving a few weeks. Whatever. You have to choose who you listen to and who you believe. Are you going to believe this dream story somebody's telling you? Are you going to listen to a burnout old man that's been out here for 30 years that really does have a, t a clue? Now one told me that I was out of touch with the trucking industry. If I wanted to do my subscribers a favor, uh, do them right, then I needed to find out about the new trucking. You know what? The new trucking is the same as old trucking. You pick up freight to here and you deliver it to here. And the company tries to make as much money off of it as they can. And you're nothing but a expense. You're a necessary evil. You're a necessary expense. Period. It's the same thing in that factory that you're working in right now. They have to have you to get production to make their money. So they're going to pay you as little as they possibly can. They're going to give you as few of benefits as they possibly can. So that they can put as much money in their pocket as they possibly can. That's the way of the world. It's not any different out here. Yeah, there's exceptions to the rule. Good luck finding. But with that, my time has now zeroed out on me, I do believe. My 10-hour break is officially over. Yes, it is. So I have to go on duty. And I have to do a pre-trip and get this beast ready to go. Y'all remember... God loves you, so do I. And I tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. Y'all have a good day now. Bye.